and it goes to yeah and then okay. it goes right in there and now you are recording and i don't want any voices or anything like you'll have to cut it off Okay, so um, for today's watercolor lesson, I'm going to show you guys how to do um, a hummingbird. I love painting hummingbirds just because they have such bright colors and there's all different varieties of hummingbirds. So I'm going to start out with um, the first color that I like to use um, would be yellow because yellow is a really good base. You can put green over the top and um, aqua blue. So I do see a lot of those colors right here underneath the little hummingbird's chest in here. So I'm just going to paint in sort of like a, a puddle here of yellow. And then a little bit of yellow as well on top of the hummingbird's head to get some of that color in. Now notice how I did not put the color everywhere. That's because um, I really want to capture what I'm seeing in nature, which is a lot of different patches and variety of color. I'm also going to switch my brush out now and start adding in some turquoise. Uh, one of my favorite colors to use on my palette is turquoise. I love it because it, it's, it can, you know, lean towards either blue or green. And uh, it's such a great color. And you're going to see what happens when I start flooding a few strokes of color into the yellow and we get this beautiful mix. Okay, and then I'm going to start painting some strokes across this way and underneath, right here, underneath his chin, and then just pulling it down and around. Just getting the general shape, this little bird here. And then I'm using some water just to kind of spread it out as well. Now this is only going to be the first layer. And that's the wonderful thing about watercolor is you really can uh, work in layers, you can build up those colors slowly and really capture that vibrance, especially when you're painting a subject like this. And then I'm going to pull some of these strokes down right here and then going over the top of the yellow, which is such a great base color. And then I'm doing a little zigzag stroke over here. Taking a little bit more of my turquoise, putting some strokes down here. Now one of the places that I want to leave some room for is where we see his little feet, his little claws that are um, grabbing onto a twig. And we're going to draw that in just a minute. Then I also want to take some dark color here. We need some black. So I don't usually use straight black. I like to mix it sometimes. You can make mix a nice black using a dark brown and a blue. Make sure those two colors will work really nicely. And I'm just going to start painting in some strokes. Look how dark that is. It's a mixer, mixture of blue and brown. Now you may ask, well, why do I want to mix up a black? It's not that you can't use a black straight from a tube. You definitely can. Um, but there is times when I like to mix my own black because I find that the black that I get is a lot more richer and has a slight tinge of color to it. It doesn't look quite as flat. So that's why I like to mix my own. I'm just taking the point of my brush and kind of pulling that over here. And then we can come over here and kind of wrap around, start to begin to do part of the tail. And then, of course, I'm going to swipe that up with a little bit of water. And then I'm going to soften this edge right in there. And then I also want to take a little bit of this color. And using my brush, I'm going to start to paint in the underneath of the beak right there. Now I will come back in just a second and soften this a little bit and put some more color. We just want to 
get the shadow on uh, going on right there and then also some of these little claws so that we can tell that he's actually sitting on something and I also want to mix some brown one of my favorite browns to use is called burnt sienna and I have this here on my palette it, I like to mix it with a little bit of yellow too so it looks more like a tan color yellow ochre is also a good choice very similar it's really a light yellowish brown and I'm going to take this color and I'm going to create a little twig or a branch that the bird is sitting on and I'm using the tip of my brush I don't want my branch to be perfectly straight because that's not what I would see in nature in nature I'm going to see a branch that um, has a slight little curve to it and maybe what I'll do is make the branch curve all the way down here taking my brush lifting it up and curving it down this is going to be the first layer I can come back and put a darker shadow under there by taking some more of this burnt sienna which happens to be a darker brown and I want you to see what happens when I start adding some little dashes of that darker brown you can see how it mixes and merges with the lighter brown taking a wee bit more right in there you go I'm going to come back now this area has begun to dry off so I like to work in layers when I'm working with watercolor because that means that I can keep things separate it helps things not go too crazy as far as turning into mud if you let things dry off and then it's easier to work on an, on another section once, once it's dried and now I'm going to think about the eye that's going to be really important to start painting in the eye shape so um, before I do that I'm actually going to draw it in with a pencil sometimes you're working with small details on your painting you'll find that it helps to just sketch it in and that means that you can get that placement in there correctly so our little bird's eye is right in here and then I can paint around it and I'm going to go back into this color which is ultramarine blue here's my puddle right here dip my brush in water and then I'm just going to come around the eye shape with some strokes of color right here these are some of the darker blue feathers that we see right around the hummingbird's eye and then I also want to come over to this area and put a few little strokes and I love the way this has a nice blurry edge to it because you know whenever you look at feathers on a bird they're often sort of soft and especially the ones that are underneath his chin there Let's pull this down and then soften this with a little bit of water and I'm going to come back and take some yellow and then what I want to do is just go ahead right now and connect all of this together it's going to be really important just to connect that going over the top a wee bit just filling it in and then I'm going to come back and take a smaller brush I like to switch my brushes out because sometimes when you get into those little tiny details it's important to have a little tiny brush and that means that you can get those areas a lot more accurate so I'm going to take a small brush this one is about a size two or three round brush it's a sable brush and I'm going to use some of that same black that we had before remember when I took some brown and I mixed blue with it now I have a puddle so I'm going to take some of that come back here 
Okay. And then I'm going to use the tip of my brush. Right here. And see how I slow down. Whenever I'm working on those important details, I'm not going to work fast. It has a little highlight right there. And then I'll put a little bit of dark color right around here. And then underneath the chin, what I'm going to do is go right on top of some of the blue. And it's, a little, it's still wet, so that means that we're going to get that nice, soft, blurry edge. And then I'm going to use a little stippling technique. Stippling technique is when you use the very tippy tip of your brush. You kind of bounce the brush up and down on the paper. And um, that's really helpful when you want to small, uh, fill in small areas. So I'm going to do that again, a little stippling technique. And that's also useful for getting in some of those tiny little fluffy feathers that you might see underneath um, the chin there of the hummingbird. And then right here I'm going to pull this down. Coming back and refining some of these feathers. That's going to be really important. And then I'm going to pull this down right here. And also up this way, coming back in under here, a little bit more of this color. This time I have more blue. I'm going to mix more blue into that black mix. Because I notice that when I observe the um, bird, that they have more of a bluish gray. So, you know, change up that color just slightly. And then I'm making a roundish, long shape there for some of those uh, feathers, those tail feathers that we're seeing. And you're not going to see all of them because the branch is actually hiding some of the detail. So kind of have to let that overlap part of those tail feathers. And then I'm just smoothing that out and blending it, pulling this down. And then I'm going to come back into my yellow right now and then take some of the yellow, go backwards and forwards. So now it blends a little bit with the black. And I really like that because I think that that helps to get a nice transition between those areas. So we're just almost done with the first layer. And it's so important when you're working with watercolor is that you work on the most important areas, you establish a nice foundation of your color. And remember that you do not have to necessarily do everything in the first layer. In fact, it does help a lot because if you let the first layer completely dry, then you can go back and just pump up your colors, your values, and go after just some of the major important details. So you can see I'm already coming back over now and building up some darker patches of some of the blue. This is, happens to be like an ultramarine blue going over the other blue that we had and it looks a lot darker and more vibrant in that second layer. I'm also making some little strokes here over the top of the gray, kind of pulling it down and then allowing some of the texture of those strokes to show through because that really reminds me of those layers of little uh, feathers that we're seeing over here. And then I'm going to do the same thing here, putting a little bit more color here. I mean, once again, just softening some of those strokes. I'm going to come back in now and mix a little bit more darker color. Taking some of our brown and our blue, that's how I'm mixing up my black. And I'll pull this here. More of those shapes of feathers. Now, whenever you look at a bird and you really closely examine it, you'll see that um, the feathers have uh, different shapes and sizes. The, uh, the feathers that are on the wings are often longer and the ones that you see on top of his head or even in this area are going to be smaller. So that's how we want to paint them is exactly 
how they look in real life. Now I'm going to mix up a color here with just um, the same dark black that we mixed but lots of water and I'll show you why because I want to get a very soft gray for the top of the bead. I don't want to leave that completely black so I'm going to mix up a, a soft gray by using um, more water in the color and I'm also going to go back over here and just establish some of those little little feet that are curling around the branch see that right in here and just a few little strokes to represent some of those feathers that are right underneath the tail they're obviously going to be darker all right so I'm going to let that bird dry off a little bit and what I like to do is um, go ahead and paint in some other areas of the painting while the bird is drying. And that gives it an opportunity to be ready for the final details. And then meanwhile, you just kind of bounce over to a different part of your painting. And what I'm going to do right now is kind of push this up so you guys can see. And uh, I'm putting water all over the background and you guys are going to see why in just a minute coming up close here allowing that water just to soak into the paper this is called priming your paper when you put the water down and uh, what I'm going to do is now take a brush this dark color that I have but this time I am going to add more brown because I'm thinking about all those branches that we're going to see and we're going to create some of those branches by making wiggly lines. There's a whole network of them because we're looking into sort of a forest scene. Maybe this is the Amazon jungle or something. So we are going to see lots of branches and leaves in the background. So I'm just going to paint them in just like that. And because it's going back in space, it means that the branches don't have so much detail whatever you look at in a painting or even in a photograph you're going to see that the things that are in the foreground in the front are going to have much sharper detail and whatever is in the background is going to be softer and not quite as detailed so that's why we're making these branches with that soft fuzzy line and maybe I just might put a few little dashes in here right in here and then I'm going to Mix up a yellow. So here is some yellow here, bright yellow, and here's some sap green. This is just a green that I use a lot on my palette. And I love this color because it's so great for mixing. And we're doing some kind of jungle plants. So I'm going to mix some of that for my first initial wash. So here it is these long, skinny leaves that I'm going to put in here. And some of these are kind of overlapping each other and branch of course is overlapping some of these leaves. So we want to get the, the yellow color down, the yellowish green. And then I'm going to pull this color all the way up here and then paint it in right there. And then I'm going to pull some color right on the other side and then making sure that I paint right behind the beat. First layer that you do is going to be your lightest layer and most spontaneous. And you can come back in now and go for a darker green. So I'm going to take the same mix, but this time I'm going to take more of the sap green, which is my darker green. And I'll show you. Then I'm going to put some strokes right in the center and over here. And those colors are blending together really nicely and pulling this around. Okay, and then also here. So now it's starting to come together as far as creating a background. Looks like a jungle. I'm going to take even a different green this time. This is Hooker's Green, and it is a green that. Um, is a really nice green for making all different kinds of 
leaves. Um, I am going to take a little bit of brown and mix that because out straight out of my palette, it's kind of pretty bright. So this mixing a tiny bit of brown can really help you get greens that look more realistic. And then I'm going to put another one here and then another one here. And I'm using a little bit of water just to kind of blend out those edges. And then also another leaf here, and just softening the edge. And you can see how it's getting this really nice blurry effect um, right here. And this, these lines on here are a little bit more sharper, but I like the way we have this blurry effect here. I think that looks really nice. A bit more brown. And then I'm going to come back over here and just fill in some of these branches, making it a little bit darker. Okay, and another thing you can do is once you get to a place where maybe you've painted in a few different areas, then you're going to want to let it dry off and then come back in. And now we can focus in on the bird. The bird could do with some details around its eyes. So I'm going to take some blue and some brown and this time I really want to get a very dark black. So I had to go for a second layer. That's going to make that really stand out and look more like a realistic hummingbird eye. And then I'm going to come in here once again going over the next layer with some of these long skinny lines that represent the wing of my bird. And then also I'm going to take my brush, make a wiggly line right here. Just putting more emphasis on some of those wings and then softening it. more brown and some more blue. And then now I'm going to use the tip of my brush because if you look at this little hummingbird closely, these tiny little um, feathers right underneath there, some of them are very shiny, very bright colors. I'm going to get those in. And then I'm just going to go back over the top here. And this time I'm going to take a really skinny brush that I really like to use for details. And this brush is called a rigger brush. Now, evidently, they used to use these brushes for um, painting riggers on boats in the olden days, but I want you to see what this brush looks like. It's got a very long tip and it's very small, nice point on it. And so that can be good for getting in um, real small details, skinny little areas on your painting. I really like using this brush and I also use a variety of different brushes for um, different parts of my painting. I like to vary things. I think it makes paintings look so much more interesting when you create different kinds of textures and um, brush marks on your paper. I'm going to take some more of this blue right now and I'm going to show you how I'm going to make these little C shapes that represent some of the um, tiny little feathers right here. I'm going to go over here. So now we're working on a lot more of the detail because we really are at the final stage of the painting where you're going to go after the details. You wouldn't want to do this in the first stage. Start off with more spontaneous larger areas and then you work towards the smaller more detail at the end of the painting. All right so maybe I'll put a little bit more. Let's try some of this green and I'm going to show you how we can make these little tiny shapes for some of the 
See this right here? Little curvy shapes. Little dashes and lines. Okay. And also some of these longer ones right here. And then we have these other little curved right there. And we come back in now with some more of our aqua blue. Right in here. Right. Picking some more blue right now. And then I'm just going to also paint a little line right there. That creates more of a three-dimensional quality because we have this darker shadow on this side. All right, and then I can take some blue as well and paint a little bit of blue right above the bird's head because that looks like some sky or some light that's peeking through some of those uh, leaves. And over here, I'm just going to spread this around. And then taking the tip of the brush, just pulling that in like that. Now, one of the things that um, I recommend for you if you're new to watercolor, you're new to drawing and painting, perhaps you haven't picked up a brush in a long time, um, definitely try working in shorter periods of time. What will happen is the more skill you develop, you'll be able to work for longer and longer periods of time. In the beginning, I would say just work on a painting maybe 15 or 20 minutes and then let the layers dry and come back perhaps the next day or sometime that week and then work on the next layer. Because what happens is um, you'll find that you will increase your skills but also you'll have more confidence. And uh, you can see that in the beginning, laying down the first few washes goes pretty quickly. But when you're working on these details to really pull that painting together, it does take extra time to do a good job. So um, I think that's a really good strategy is just setting a short period of time for yourself in the beginning and just working in small segments. It's like that old saying that says inch by inch is it. It's a cinch, yard by yard, it's hard. So um, set yourself doable goals, especially if you have a busy schedule. You'll find that that'll work so much better for you. All right, so now I have this green color here, and I want to go ahead and darken it up right in this area. So I'm going to put a little bit more green in here. And then using the tip of my brush, you can see how much easier it is to do that when that first layer has dried off. And then coming back over here, using the tip of my brush too to fill in any of those little white gaps that sometimes we'll, we can see. And then I'm going to also put some darker green over here for one of these leaves. There we go, just mixing that up. And I can put some more darker color right there.
and then painting in right next to this tail. I want to fill that in with some other areas where we see some green foliage. A little bit more in here. And then I'm making some circular strokes in here. That's another way that you can apply paint. Lots of different ways that you can make brush strokes. Pulling this down and also right in here. And finally, let's find a much darker um, color here. So it's green with lots of blue. It's another way that you can mix a really nice green. So I'm just going to fill this in with some strokes and I'm pulling down this way and then also up here and then across. And of course we want to do the same thing on the other side so we kind of get a little bit more even. And I'm softening that edge as well. So you can see that what's happening now is we've begun to get a network of leaves and suggestion of some branches and things that are in the background. So what I'm going to do right now is just take a look at this for a minute. And that's where you want to leave your painting to the side for a little bit and maybe. Um, analyze it and see what areas you need to work on in order to finish it. What I'll do right now is, before I finish this, I would like to put a little bit more turquoise because I love this color turquoise. Definitely see a lot of turquoise in this bird. And I'm just going to make some little dots. So um, you can see how this is beginning to spread a little bit more than what I want over here and that's good um, lesson to learn a watercolor because sometimes you get those little bleeds happening where things spread more than what you want so you have two choices you can let that be a part of your painting um, or the other one is you can just pull it out I like to use a paper towel and that will stop it from spreading and pull out some of the pigment and um, then I can always paint over that area later on just to kind of fix that if I need to so watercolor, a lot of people say watercolor is a difficult medium. I think it's only difficult if you don't have um, ways to work with it, if you haven't learned some of the tools of the trade, so to speak. But once you do, it's actually a very easy medium. Put a little bit more turquoise in here. And then maybe, you can see how I'm stippling on top because I'm kind of layering a little bit more color here and also in here to get some of that color. Okay, all right. So I would say that as far as we're gonna get today on this bird, now I might come back in and uh, leave it to the side for a day or two and then come back and put a few more details. In that case, I'll do another live session with you guys and you can see how I work and my procedures and hopefully this will help you uh, with your own paintings.